Hey everyone, Nick here again, and this is our fourth and final video in the series about how to make and format a line chart that will show your museum visitors' attendance over time. So if you remember back to our initial chart, this was the chart that we're sort of going for. This was a chart that we're trying to make. It's a really beautiful chart. It has a great descriptive title. We have a lot of context in the chart. There are these annotation boxes that are here. Um, that really tell the story as your reader goes through it. And then we have some context here in that we have this area box here that shows our average attendance, which really makes it easy for me as a reader to see if we are above or below average over time. The other cool thing about this chart is that we have this, uh, our y-axis here is labeled in millions, so we have 3.0 million instead of all those zeros that come after it. That's a lot of ink to use on the chart page. Um, and then it also includes this really nice horizontal unit label, uh, which is kind of like an axis label here. A lot of times by default, Excel or PowerPoint will put the axis label chart in a vertical way here that's sideways. And so when you give a reader a chart like that, you immediately see them turning their neck and their head to the left to try and read that axis label. Let's go ahead and make it easier for everyone and make it horizontal there. This was a trick that uh, we learned as part of the Evergreen Data Visualization Academy. I'll put their link in the comment below. Um, but this was um, just a design tip that I think came from a chart that we found in the New York Times. They have some great data visualizations there, so you should always look to the New York Times for some best practices and really unique design elements there. But I'm going to show you how to make this. I'm going to show you how to update your y-axis label here. And then I'm going to show you how to embed this area chart or this benchmark area line uh, or area here into the chart. You can see when I click on it, it's actually a column chart. So this is a combination chart that includes a line chart and a column chart, and I'm going to show you how to do that in Excel. So let's go uh, click back over to our Excel file here. Let's first update the units here. Now, one thing to know, in the last chart, uh, when I was formatting the chart, all of these data labels are coming directly from the source data over here. As soon as I update the chart's units um, on the y-axis, it's going to update those over here too, and I'll show you what I mean once we do it. So go ahead and click on your y-axis, right-click to format the axis. The format axis dialog box shows up. Scroll all the way down here to this section that says display units. Right now it's set to none, but if you click on this drop-down, you can see all the different units, the numerical units that you can have um, represented on your y-axis, and I'm going to go to millions. So once I do that, it updates to 0, 1, 1, and it's because these are all in 500,000 increments. And then you can also see the little millions label up here. So let's first make this horizontal. Now you don't have to like try and flip it or make it, uh, you know, kind of drag it in different places. You can actually just set the position of this label over here in the format display unit box right here. Go over, go over here to the little sizing and properties icon. And then right here, it says vertical alignment and then text direction. Click on the text direction. Right now, it says rotate all to uh, all text 270 degrees. Instead, we're just going to go ahead and click horizontal. And so it makes that horizontal. And then what you can do is click it, and you can drag it right over to the 3 right there. Now, the other thing that you can do is update what it says. Um, and so I'm going to actually double click into the box and you can type anything you want in here. So I'm going to make everything all caps and I'm going to say million visitors because that's what this chart is all about, is about visitors. I'm going to make sure that this is the same font size. I think it's 12 or maybe it's 14 as the uh, as our y-axis labels. Yeah. And then I'm going to just nudge, I'm going to drag it just a little bit to make it a little bit better alignment right there. And then I see the grid line coming through, so I need to go and format the label so that there's it's filled with white. So I'm going to go ahead to the paint bucket, select solid fill and make sure it's white. That looks great. Now I want to do something else with this because this isn't exactly what I want. I want to have a decimal point after this. So go ahead and click the axis. The format axis dialog box comes up, the menu right here. Go all the way down to the number menu, and this is where your number formats are uh, taken into account. So you can see decimal places right now is set to zero. Let's just set that to one and push enter. And now you can see that pops up perfectly here. I'm going to go ahead and adjust my plot area, my plot size a little bit. We'll move, click on this to move the label back in 
front of there. That looks really, really nice. But you can see that since I switched those units, now my data labels for 2010, 19, 20, and 21 have now kind of defaulted to one decimal point. And so I'm going to go back and do the same thing. Once these box text boxes, um, label boxes are highlighted, go over to the format data label dialog box and then menu and then click on the number. We are going to actually format this to a number instead of general. And then you can see we it's set to uh, two decimal places and I think that's actually pretty good for this so we'll just know that this is 2.63 million because everything over here is in millions now if you wanted the exact number to show up here you could probably um, make that work in a few different ways but the easiest way would probably just be to include it in your text box so I might just delete this data label I'm going to highlight it twice to isolate just this one so I can show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and delete it, push backspace, and then in the text box, I'm going to say this is 2, let's see, 2, let's see, what's 2019's data? 2,634,000, and maybe I'll just say visitors. So yeah, so you could incorporate that into the text uh, the text box that you have for the annotation box if you wanted to do that. And maybe I'll just drag it over a little bit to make it even more aligned. So if you wanted the entire uh, all the entire number there for each of your data labels, that's one way that you could accomplish it. But I think it's okay to have your data labels like this, particularly if your units are already over here in millions. Okay, so now let's make this benchmark or average area plot. Okay, let's go back to our Excel file. First, we need to calculate our average. So over here, I'm going to just create a new column of data, and it's going to be average. Formatting is a little interesting here. I'm just going to use the Format Painter to format the same. Perfect. Now here, I'm going to say, I'm going to actually calculate a formula here in Excel. So I'm going to type in equal sign in this cell. This is how you create a formula. And then I'm going to type the word average. And you can see the average formula pops up. If I double click this, it's going to automatically open a parenthesis and it's going to ask me what I want to average. And I want all of this to average. I want a 21 year average. So I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to click a close parenthesis and then I'm going to click enter. Now it's giving me the average value here. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and format this the same so you can see it a little easier. So it's 2,000, sorry, 2 million uh, people is the average and, and some change. So if I copy this down, you will see that the average changes. Why is that? Well, because Excel is responsive. And by that, I mean right now it's saying that we're going to calculate from this point the average of C2 to C23. If I copy this cell, it's going to then say, let's do, it's going to move that average down a cell to C3 to C24. But I want to keep the same range. So I can either make an absolute reference, which would involve putting in dollar signs into this, or another trick that I like to do, let's delete this. Oops, I'm going to go ahead and click undo there. I'm going to delete this one. I actually am just going to type equals and then point to this cell and it's going to equal, and it's just going to make a copy of the cell above it. And if I drag this down, it's responsive, so it's just going to create a copy of each of the cells above it. So you can see this is the average formula, and then each of these cells just says equals D2, this is equal D3, D4, etc. So that's one way that you can have this nice little benchmark line. Now I need to add th this series of data into my chart. So I'm going to go ahead and right-click the plot area, select data, Here's my data source menu again. Now, instead of uh, doing anything here, I'm actually going to click Add. So I'm going to add a new series. It says, what's your series name? And I'm going to point to the top cell right there in that column. And then, what's the series value? And I'm going to click this, and it's going to ask me where that value, where those values live. And I'm just going to drag the entire series right here of cells. Now I'm going to push Enter. And when I click OK, now you can see the extra line is right here. So there's my average line right here. Now, 
this would be okay, but it kind of looks, I don't know, a little sloppy. You'd have to probably change the color of the line. We could do that to gray, and that would look okay. And you could put average, a uh, text box here that said average. But let's make it that combination chart so that the, this entire area is filled. So what I want to do to do that is I need to change this to a combination chart. And what I'm going to do is right click and then say change chart type. All of the recommended chart types pop up in this menu. And if you scroll all the way down to combo, click on combo, and now it says, okay, what do you want this chart to be? And I want attendance to stay as it is in a, in a line. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this is back to the line. And then the average, I want to be a column chart. So I'm going to go up here to the column menu and click on column. That's all I really need to do. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to make some edits. This would be really horrible, so don't ever keep it like this. We need to make some edits to this. So I'm going to go ahead, click on these bars, and I want to reduce the gap width, the width between the bars to zero, so there's no width at all. So click on those, go up to the Format Data Series menu, click on the bar chart icon. Right here under Gap Width, take the slider and take it to zero. Now that looks really nice. If I unclick here, you'll see that's the entire box here. I need to make sure that there's no lines in between them, so let's click on the bars, go to the paint bucket, and then make sure that the border is set to no line. So there's no there's no line there. Then let's go ahead and change the fill color of the bars, not to white, but to a really light gray. That's a little bit too dark, I think. So let's go up one more this way. And now you can see my annotation boxes are filled with white. So let's just go ahead and click on that and format these so that there's no fill so that that shows up nicely there. It's not over this. I'm going to nudge this just a little bit over there. You can see that when I did that, it removed the marker lines. So you would have to go back in and, and make those marker lines again. But a lot of my settings are probably going to be saved. So let's see if that works. Yeah, I think if I do that from before, my, my blue, you know, the settings on those marker lines are still saved. So let's just go back, make sure that the circle is there. Click built in, go down to circle. Oops, wrong one. Make sure this one is there. Built in, circle. Okay, so those are back. And there you have a really pretty threshold, benchmark, whatever you want to call it, this average line right here. We'll just want to include our next um, text box. So I'm going to copy this text box, paste it over here, and then we'll make our average. What we'll do is recolor this. I'm going to say 2 million and just make sure everyone knows that this is our average attendance. And you could just type whatever you want to in there and like make sure that the color is set to a very similar gray so that people can see it, but also that they understand that this is the average attendance line right here. This is where you might want to just type in your descriptive title. Let's see. We had our highest attendance in 2019, fell in 2020, the start of COVID-19, and rose, or let's just say increased by 31% in 2021. Let's just say last year. That's nicer. Now you can see you have to drag the chart area a little bit bigger if you want the chart, if the title to be on one line, or you can just click in here and click on Enter. Put your cursor there. Click on Enter. Make sure this is left aligned. So up here in the Alignment tab, click on Left Aligned, and it'll go back there. But there is your beautiful chart. If you wanted to recolor this, let's make it a blue so that it matches the color of the line. 
but that is your beautiful attendance chart showing museum attendance over time adds a really great layer of storytelling to it I think you should you know put, print this out on a PowerPoint slide put it in a report give it to your director give it to your supervisor and show them how awesome it is it's much easier to read and much more fun to read than just a data table like the one here on the left if you like this series of videos, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Everyone who subscribes will get notified each time we publish a new video, and I will continue to publish uh, videos on tips, tricks, data design, data viz design, and Excel and PowerPoint right here. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.